Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to show you how to draw waves and as usual I'm going to start with something a bit simpler and then move on to something a bit more complex. So as you can see I'm continuing the series of videos on landscape in colored pencil and as always I'm going to be using the polychromos colored pencils on a toned paper primed with some clear gesso. So let's start. Before we start, I just want to do a couple of quick sketches to show you how I plan to approach this because waves can be a little bit confusing and you need to try to simplify a little bit. So you want to draw them like this. They have their raised parts and lowered parts. The raised parts or the hills are called the crest and the valleys are called the trough. When you draw multiple waves, you want to stack them like this. You don't want to draw them parallel to one another. You want to draw the crest above the trough of the wave below it. That's usually the case. It depends on the viewpoint and other things, but that's usually how it looks more or less. Now, another thing that you need to remember is that because of the perspective, the waves which are closer to us will be larger and wider, and the ones which are further away will be getting smaller and smaller and packed more tightly together and less and less defined. To make things more complicated, these waves will consist of multiple smaller shapes within these larger shapes. So as you can see, it's a very complex topography of ever-moving hills and valleys. Now, in terms of shading, I suppose because the light source is usually coming from above, this middle area between the waves will be a little bit lighter and these raised parts will have a little bit of shadow on the sides. That's usually the case, so that's usually how it appears. And there's usually going to be a little bit of foam around the crest, a little bit of white uh, pencil will be needed there. Now if you want to draw a single wave, like for example a large overspilling wave like this, there will be a lot of foam and uh, at the bottom you'll need a bit of darker value because you'll have more shadow there and then you'll have some of these streaks of uh, white foam showing the direction of the wave but uh, because of the thickness of the water in different parts of the wave some parts will be a little bit darker, but the part here just below the crest will usually be a little bit lighter because it's more transparent or translucent, whatever, and it will usually be a little bit more greenish. So let me show you how I plan to do this. So the first scene is going to be like a beach with some waves uh, washing up on the shore. I'm going to start by drawing the line of the horizon the line of the water using a Prussian blue. It's a dark blue that I'll use for the waves in most of these drawings, uh, for, for the water for most of these drawings, and then I'm going to combine it with some other blues and turquoise and even some greenish colors. So uh, I first drew the line of the water and now <clears throat> I'm going to draw some of these waves uh, which are washing up on the beach. I'm drawing an irregular shape of these waves and the part of the beach uh, which is closer to us on the left is going to be a bit wider and then it's going to be getting a bit narrower to the right. And I'm going to have multiple waves here like one behind the other washing up on the beach. And now the reason why I think this scene is a bit simpler is because when you look at the waves from a distance it usually appears like uh, white foamy objects or white foamy shapes on the surface of the water. That's about it. So now I drew the sky above the water and I use the sky blue for that. I'm just going to blend it a bit with my finger because you can do this on a sanded surface. There's a bit more residue and it's a bit easier to move the material around. And after that I'm going to draw uh, or rather color in the, the sea or the ocean, whatever it is, using this Prussian blue. 
So now I'm covering everything with this dark blue and then I'm going to add some lighter details on top of that. So as you can see I always have a little bit of residue to work with and I can blend that either with some of my blending tools or my finger whichever I find more convenient at the time. And once it's uh, blended enough I can start uh, refining the details. Now I'm going to blur the line of the horizon just a little bit because I don't want it to be too clean. I, I just want a slightly softer line there. Like it's kind of fading in the distance because of the atmospheric effect. And after that I'm just going to add a few clouds above the, above the sea on the horizon. Just a few light clouds in the distance just to make the scene a bit more interesting. I'm not drawing the clouds or the sky in this demonstration but there's no harm in adding just a few of them here just to make the drawing a, a little bit more convincing, a bit more interesting. So now that I've, uh, I'm done with the sky I can move on with the water and the waves which is what you came here for of course. I'm gonna need a white colored pencil for that. Uh, here on the beach I'm gonna add a touch of some brownish tones uh, to show where the sand is a little bit wet and uh, after that I need to do a bit more work with a sharp white colored pencil. So now I'm doing these foamy, foamy parts of the waves which are washing up on the shore, the closest ones to our viewpoint. And some of them are very thin layers of water which are barely visible. Some of them are a little bit uh, thicker and more foamy. And they're coming up one behind the other. So as you can see there's really not that much to it just need to add a little bit of white here and it already looks like foamy water. Then I can start adding even more waves behind these and maybe a tiny bit of shadow under some of them just to in increase that contrast. Here, a little bit above these, I'm going to have a slightly larger wave coming up. And this one is going to have a little bit of shadow uh, around that, uh, or just under that crest. So I'm using that Prussian blue again to go over this blended area to make it a little bit darker. And then I'm going to draw some more waves in the distance coming up behind this one. But th those are going to be smaller and less defined. Now on top of this uh, wave or this group of waves which is coming up here in the middle, I'm going to draw some foamy water at the crest. Now here I actually encountered uh, some of the first difficulties because normally I'm able to layer lighter details on top of the darker layers on a sanded surface but clear gesso isn't perfect in that respect so I got a little bit of muddying and the white foamy parts ended up being a little bit more bluish than I wanted them to be it's not bad it still looks like waves but I just was kind of expecting that I would, uh, I would be able to get slightly cleaner uh, whiter marks uh, but I managed to do it somehow so it still looks okay because this is a very simple scene and you don't really need to do too much to draw something that kind of looks like a surface of the water with some waves. So as you can see all you have to do is draw some of these uh, shadow areas with a darker blue and then some uh, details with a white colored pencil for the foamy parts of the crest of the waves and it pretty much looks like it pretty much looks like waves washing out on the beach. I added a few details to the beach itself here 
did a little bit of blending, added a few more touches of that white for the filmy water, and uh, refined the appearance of the horizon a little bit, and just a few touches with a sharp white colored pencil, and maybe a little bit of the sky blue here on this part of the sand uh, uh, where, where, the, where the ground is wet because it's going to be a little bit more reflective I suppose so I made that a bit more bluish and added a little bit more shadow under some of these waves on the beach just to make them appear a bit more three-dimensional I suppose So that's it. I think this is, a, this is a fairly simple scene. Obviously, as everything, it does need a little bit of practice if you want to make it look good. But I don't think it requires that much skill. It's something to start with. Now for the second drawing, I'm going to do something very similar to the first one. But uh, a little bit more of a close-up view of those waves, which means that I'll have to define them a little bit better and that I'm going to have to draw a bit more details and do a bit more shading and things like that. So I'm going to start by drawing some waves and then um, coloring that part of the paper which I intend to, where I intend to draw the waves again using that Prussian blue. And as I'm coloring in this part of the paper, I'm already making some suggestions of the shapes of waves within that designated area. And as you can see, some of them are a little bit closer to a viewpoint, some of them are a little bit further away. And I want to vary their shape a little bit as well as their size so that the ones which are closer to us are a little bit larger. So I'm going to be blending over this but I still want to at least give myself an idea where some of those uh, crests of the waves will be. After that I added a touch of some phthalo blue to modify the color slightly because I wanted a slightly different color for this one even though I used the same base color this dark blue and then I did a bit of blending. This is some initial blending. As you can see, I still have a little bit of texture, but that's okay. I'm going to be working over it with, with both the darker colors and the lighter colors. So as you can see, this already looks uh, like some sort of a surface of the water because we already have some variation in value to indicate which parts of that surface are raised and which are lowered. At the top, I'm starting to draw these foamy, foamy bits on the crests of these waves. And uh, I want to have, uh, I want to have these waves kind of crashing into one another and kind of almost overlapping in places. And with these uh, white foamy touches of a white pencil, uh, you don't want to draw them too regular, like uh, regular triangles or anything. You want to uh, draw discontinued white lines, throwing in a few of these uh, white foamy bits here and there, in between the waves as well, just to make it a little bit more random and unpredictable. There is a pattern to it, but there is also a bit of randomness to it as well, so if you want to make it look realistic, you have to add an element of randomness to it and not make them look too uniform. Again, I'm getting a bit of a problem uh, by adding those uh, lighter details on top of the dark blue because uh, the tooth of this uh, paper gets worn out very quickly. I do a lot of colored pencil drawings on a 1000 grit sandpaper maybe that would work a little bit better but clear gesso usually does a pretty good job when i draw landscapes so i just had to uh, be a little bit more patient in how i in how i'm adding 
some of those white foamy parts even though they ended up look, looking a bit more bluish than I wanted them to but it's not a big deal. Finally I added a bit more shadow here using an even darker blue. This is a dark indigo blue which is uh, very dark and a bit duller. <coughs> Sorry, it's almost black uh, but obviously kind of bluish and it helped me increase the range of value and make these waves a bit more three-dimensional. And it also made those white foamy parts, or rather light blue foamy parts, uh, stand out even more. Um, one of the things I noticed when trying to layer lighter details on top of the darker ones on this surface was that you should avoid trying to use too much pressure. Often I can achieve lighter details by twisting my pencil and pressing a little bit harder, but sometimes that kind of uh, worked against my purpose and uh, I ended up achieving the opposite effect by getting a bit more muddying of colors rather than cleaner, cleaner marks. So I had to adapt as I go along and uh, I just had to work with what the paper and the pencil were giving me. But in the end I thought that it turned out okay because uh, this again is not an overly complex drawing. It's just more of a close-up view of the, of the drawing above. So it's the same thing, just some waves with some foamy uh, white bits. It's just a slightly closer view with a with a bit more attention to to the detail and to the shape of the waves. So I do hope that it looks like actual waves and actual water. I'm going to move on to the third drawing and now I'm going to draw something a bit more complex because now I'm going to draw a single wave that's kind of spilling over and I'm going to need to draw a lot more detail and uh, I'm going to use more colors on this one as well. So let's see how it will be done. First I'm drawing the white foamy parts. Uh, the reason why I decided to do that be uh, was because I experienced some problems adding those lighter details on top of the darker layers. So here I thought why not start uh, with the lighter details first when I already know or have a pretty good idea where I'm going to place them. Of course eventually I will have to work from dark to light and this is what this sanded surface is for but uh, if I can avoid doing it in some cases I will because I want to get some extra white foamy, foamy details. Uh, I always recommend when you work with colored pencils to work on a sanded surface. Here I'm working on uh, paper covered with clear gesso, but if you have something like UART that would be perfect. Pastel mat would also do the trick. Sometimes I just also use just regular sandpaper from a hardware store, but a finer 1000 grit sandpaper which really really works well uh, as a surface. Uh, uh, for colored pencils and pastel pencils for that matter. Here at the bottom I drew some of these uh, lighter details on the water just below that large wave and uh, now I'm going to draw some sky above it. So in almost each and every one of these little drawings I try to create almost like a small scene and here I added some sky above the wave using again that sky blue colored pencil and uh, first I had to lay down enough of the pencil and then I had to do a little bit of blending. So one of the things that you will notice when you're working on this type of paper is that it's generally a little bit faster to work with than regular paper because you cover uh, areas much more quickly and you get more vibrant colors but at the same time there can be a bit of texture because it's kind of rough so you need to find a way to smooth that out with blending tools. So here we have some 
surface of the water behind this wave and I'm pretty much going to leave it like that for now so that I can focus on the wave. Uh, for this part of the wave which is spilling over to our side first I'm going to add some darker blue, that brush, Prussian blue and then I'm going to add some sky blue uh, just to have some uh, bluish details and some darker details and then I'm going to add some um, bluish green details. This is kind of like a very light turquoise color. Uh, this part of the wave is going to be more bluish than greenish. That's why I added only a touch of that turquoise. But at the at the inner part of the wave where it's kind of bending and spilling over I'm going to be using a little bit more of that greenish color. So now I'm doing a bit of blending to soften that and make it look a bit more like actual water and then I'm just drawing some of these foamy streaks on top of that wave just to show the general shape of that wave and to kind of try to explain the direction of the movement of the water but I can't just draw curved lines, simple curved lines, I have to uh, kind of make it look a bit more complicated than that by uh, varying the direction and the shape of some of these streaks so that it looks a bit more like unpredictable splashing foamy water. Now here at the top I'm adding a bit more of this greenish blue and that's something that you will usually see with waves that this part here is a bit more transparent or translucent whatever the word is because it's because the water is thinner there and more of the light is breaking through and it will usually appear lighter and uh, often more greenish or it will have more green in that part of the wave while in some other parts of the surface of the water you will have um, more of a regular blue or more of a reddish component to it so where there is uh, more green there is less uh, red I suppose and where there is more red there is less green so I want a range of blues to describe the the color as well as the shape of these waves now here at the bottom I added a bit of that darker Prussian blue and now I'm trying to blend that in to create a softer, softer, smoother transition between the two. And as I'm doing that, you see how the wave is starting to take shape. The wave is starting to take shape and the lighter area at the top is slowly starting to make sense, as well as the darker area at the bottom because that's the shadow area where there is more water and more shadow so I think this is already starting to look good but obviously I'm still going to need to refine it quite a bit by doing a bit more blending and adding a few more details to it as well a bit more splashing water at the top here and there just to make it a bit more interesting and a bit more detailed we got to have those fine textures and details to entertain the eye of the viewer and to trick them into thinking that they're looking at something super detailed that I spent many hours drawing when in fact a lot of the time I just allow the pencil to work for me even the foamy water is not going to be completely white some parts of it are going to be a little bit uh, lighter than others and generally those parts of that splashing water which are uh, kind of splashing out or sticking out will be catching more light from the light source because they're more exposed to the light source. Now I'm going to draw some more of those uh, foamy streaks of water within the wave. I want to make this uh, I want to make these look a, a little bit random but at the same time, there has to be a certain 
pattern to it in the sense that I have to reflect the uh, the shape of the wave and the movement of the water, the, the direction of the movement of, of that wave. But like I said, I can't make it too regular because I want to have the foamy water splashing all over the place. If you hear some background noises, um, those are just the celebrations outside uh, because it's an Orthodox Christmas. Um, now, I added a few more of those darker streaks here at the top because uh, at, in that area they will be in the shadow. And now I'm adding a bit more shadow at the bottom and just under that uh, wave using a Prussian blue again. And uh, after that I'll, ha I'll just have to draw some rough surface of the water under the wave using a combination of blues mostly. I will use less of this greenish blue here and a bit more of the Prussian blue and just a regular blue. Um, I'm doing a, a lot of blending here because I'm getting a lot of texture. I want to make this look smoother so I have to use my blending tools quite a bit. And uh, as you can see, I keep going back in and adding more value. At one point, I even added a little bit of that dark indigo blue, which is the darkest pencil I used here, to, to draw some of the darkest parts of this wave. And now I'm just refining the shape and the appearance of these uh, uh, white or light foamy streaks. I mean, I'm doing this with a white colored pencil. I could use a light gray or something, but there's really no need because uh, when I just use a white pencil and I don't uh, put down too much of it or I don't press too hard, it's uh, going to it's not going to be white anyway. So the reason why it can't be completely white is because it's in the shadow uh, from that wave. So. It needs to be a little bit darker than white, I suppose. Here I'm just sort of refining some of the details, adding some details on the surface of the water in the background, and also adding some more of these uh, foamy details on the crests of these uh, waves in the foreground, just below the wave. So that's it. That was the third drawing the most detailed one so far. I hope you like it. And now I'm going to draw something a little bit more different. I'm going to draw a large wave crashing on the rocky shore. So this one is going to be different than the one above in the sense that um, there's just going to be more uh, foam. I'm just going to use more of the white color pencil. But first I have to draw some rocks. So, as you can see, I'm not drawing all waves, I have to draw some other elements of the scene. And here I'm just going to draw some rocks, because it's like a rocky shore, a rocky beach, whatever it is. And uh, I'm adding uh, a bit more value at, uh, at those parts of the rocks which are in the shadow, so which are facing down, facing away from the light source. I also added a touch of brown, a touch of uh, ochre, maybe but mostly a combination of uh, black and brown because I want these rocks to be fairly sharp, uh, fairly dark rather in comparison to the white foamy water. So now I'm gonna draw the uh, white bits first again because uh, I have a lot of those and uh, I want to avoid drawing them on top of the darker areas. So I'm just going to draw the shape of this large wave using this white pencil. And as you can see, I want to have the, the outline as irregular as possible because it's, it's splashing water after all. So I'm drawing that jagged edge and here at the bottom as well because the water will, will be splashing all around these rocks and maybe even spilling over the top of some of these rocks here the smaller ones in the middle and I just gotta cover pretty much all of this 
the body of the wave using a white pencil. Here at the bottom there's going to be a little bit more of this white foamy water and some uh, white streaks and uh, foamy water around the crests of those smaller waves and ripples at the bottom. So already the shape is starting to come up and you can see where I'm going with this but I'll still need to add more detail to this large wave. So this one is different from the one above mostly because of the amount of uh, white splashing water. Just refining the edges of some of these rocks here so that they stand out against the water. Now I'm going to do the sky because I need to do that part of the background as well because I want the wave to stand out. So I'm just going to use a Prussian blue to draw a slightly darker sky here. I'm going to use another blue on top of it, but first I'm going to establish a darker base and uh, even more of the darker blue at the top and a little bit of blending. Just want to be careful around the edges. And then I'll just go over that with a little bit of uh, sky blue to, modif to modify that color a little bit and to make it a bit lighter here near the bottom, uh, uh, closer to the waves. Applying this lighter pencil on top will um, solve the problem of blending because I will get rid of a lot of that ugly texture because I want the sky to appear mostly smooth and without any texture and detail. And it will also modify the color a little bit so that it appears a bit lighter near the horizon and a bit darker at the top, which is what I wanted it to look like. So now that I'm mostly happy with the background and I don't really need to do too much to it, I'm just going to start refining the shape of the wave here. This middle part of the wave you can see is a little bit darker because the, it's less foamy and there's more shadow there and you can see how the shape of the wave is bending towards the towards those rocks and uh, I need to use uh, those darker and lighter shapes in order to be able to explain that direction of the movement of the water to the viewer. I added a touch of some turquoise and greenish tones as well for some parts of the water. And uh, did a little bit more blending around the edges because I wasn't really happy with how the sky looked. So I Keen. I, I went back to revisit that I suppose and then I just uh, did a lot of refining of these uh, white foamy areas using a light grey and a white colored pencil. The reason why I, I used a light cool grey was because some parts of those uh, uh, foamy bits needed to be a little bit darker than the others so that I could show uh, their volume as well because you can't make, make them look three-dimensional if you don't have a range of value. And if you make everything just white, it's going to end up looking a little bit too flat. Now, because it's a smaller drawing, you could probably get away with it, but if you were doing a slightly larger, more detailed drawing of a wave, you would need a bit more range of value and a bit more detail and texture in there as well. I'm going around the edge and adding some of these smaller marks to indicate the splashing of the water. And for this I need my pencil to be fairly sharp at all times. So just a few details here and there around the edge. And the scene will be complete. And I'm also refining the appearance of the water at the bottom, just adding a, a few more of these waves and just some suggestion to, uh, suggestions of the movement of the water below. 
So uh, that, I think, is this uh, crashing wave. I just need to add a bit more value in this middle portion of the wave just to define its shape a little bit better and to increase the contrast between those darker parts of the waves and the, the wave and the light filmy parts at the top. <clears throat> and that's it. Uh, I'm just going to modify the first drawing a little bit by adding a touch of this sanguine color just so that it would stand out against the background color of the paper a little bit more. But the drawings are now done. I do hope you found uh, this tutorial useful. And uh, if you like my content, if you like these tutorials, don't forget to give me a like and subscribe, because that, that helps my channel a lot. Uh, now, if you want to see more content, and if you want to see longer videos and some real-time footage, then you should check out my Patreon. That will be all for this video. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.